Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to animate in Critter. I've put any relevant links and the timestamps in the description as to what I'll be covering, so if you want a specific part of the video, you can skip ahead. So Critter is an open source drawing software that you can get for free if you go through the link in the description. There is a paid version, which I have on PC, and the only difference is that it will update automatically, whereas the free version you have to download and reinstall it every time you want the newest version. If you're not sure whether Critter will work on your laptop or PC, you can check the program specifications to see whether Critter will run. After that, hit download and install Critter as you would any other program. When Critter is open, you'll see this screen. Hit new file and in custom document, you can alter the width and height to how you like it. For any animation I upload to YouTube, I'll set it to 1920 by 1080 pixels, while anything for TikTok or Instagram reels will be 1080 by 1920 pixels. Hit create and your canvas is ready. To get the animation toolbars, you can either go to window, workspace, animation, though this will remove your brushes and color wheel. So if I have the default workspace set up, I'll go to settings, dockers, and from this menu, I'll select animation and timeline. If your undo or redo buttons have disappeared, you can right click here and from the menu, tick the box that says file. To move any toolbars around the space, just click on the top and drag them where you want them. If you're unsure about what an icon does, just hover over them to see the name. To start animating, you'll want to create a new layer. Any new layer you make will be transparent, which is shown here by the checkered preview. This means you'll be able to use the onion skin, which wouldn't work if you were to try and animate on a filled layer like the background. With the new layer selected, go down to the timeline and right click on the first frame and select create blank frame. You should do this every time you want to draw something new. Otherwise, the image on the frame before will hold throughout the timeline instead. You'll also see this light bulb icon has appeared and this is for your onion skin. When you have two or more frames in that layer, you'll be able to activate it to see your next and previous frames. I'm going to start my animation with 100 frames. I work at 25 frames per second, which you can change here, and that means my animation will last four seconds in total. To start, I'll make sure my transparent layer is selected, move to my first blank frame and start drawing. This first pose will be the skull at its regular proportions, and I'm just sketching loosely. It doesn't have to be neat because I can clean it up later on. The next couple of frames will show the skull being squashed, ready for the next frame to really stretch the drawing out. This will give the animation a bit of a pop before it goes back to the first position. To speed up my workflow, I want to assign shortcuts. You can do this by going to Settings, Configure, Critter. These are shortcuts I've assigned to my keyboard to help me work faster, but you can assign the tools and keys how you like. If you want to copy a frame to another place in the timeline, you can right click on the frame, select copy to clipboard, right click on the frame you want it to repeat and select paste from clipboard. I want to make the animation a little smoother, so I'm going to add in a couple of in-betweens. In the animation process, that are your keyframes, which are your main poses. Then you have the breakdowns, which are the poses between your keyframes. And then you have in-betweens, which help you with timing. For example, in this ball bounce, my keyframes would be the starting point, the highest part of the bounce, and then where the ball connects with the floor. My breakdowns would be the points between those keyframes, and then I would use my in-betweens to show spacing and timing like this. For slow movements, I'll add in more in-betweens and the drawings will be quite close together. But as the ball picks up speed, the drawings will be spaced further apart. You can use the onion skin to show more frames by activating the light bulb in the layer and then selecting the onion icon in the animation panel. You can change the visibility, opacity and color of your next and previous frames here. Typically, I'll only have minus one, zero and one visible when I'm animating, but this is a good way to show you how it's all spaced out. Once I was happy with my skull, I wanted to add in some little extra animations like this to help fill out the canvas a bit more. With this coloured circle, I want it to start out slow, move quickly across the front of the skull, and then around to return to the starting position. The way I'll do this without using too many frames is to stretch out a single drawing so it appears to be travelling quicker. This is also called a smear. 
I'll keep adding these small loops until I'm happy with the animation. Now once I'm done with my animation there are a couple of ways to finish it off. My favourite style is lineless and to do that I'll just make a new layer, create keyframes matching those of my rough animation and draw over the top with a brush and colour of my choice. Alternatively I can make a new layer, line my animation and then colour by hand on a layer beneath. Or making sure all the gaps are closed, duplicate my line layer and use the bucket tool to fill in the colours. Though I'd recommend using a drawing tablet as it gives you a bit more control than using a mouse or trackpad, there's a brush stabiliser in the tool options panel that you can adjust to suit you. If you don't want to make a new layer and create a background directly in your project, you can simply click and drag one from your folders and drop it into the canvas. I'd recommend creating your background at the same dimensions as your canvas or larger and then resizing using the transformation tool or add in your backgrounds in an editing program, which I'll go over in a moment. To add sound to your project, there is a small speaker icon in the upper left-hand corner of the timeline. Left-click it, select Open Audio and choose whatever you like from your files. When that's done, it should play while scrubbing through your timeline or playing through your animation. To import a PNG sequence to Critter or a series of images, go to File, Import Animation Frames, Add Images, select what you like and press Open. These will appear in a new layer on the timeline. This is great for rotoscoping as you can reduce the opacity of the layer, make a new layer and draw over the top. There currently isn't a way to import a video directly into Critter, so your best bet is to convert your video to a PNG sequence and import it as I just showed you. When you're finally ready to export your animation, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Firstly, if you want to export your animation and bring it into an editing program to layer it up with the background, sound effects and camera moves, you can export it as a PNG sequence. To do this, go to File, Render Animation, and from the top, select Image Sequence. Make sure your first and last frames are correct. I'd recommend exporting as PNG as it offers transparency. Just make sure any filled background layers are hidden and choose the file location. As this will export every frame as an individual image, I'd suggest making a new folder. You can select only unique frames so your holds won't appear in the folder, but I tend to leave this unticked. Once you've pressed OK, it'll render and you should have something like this. For editing programs, I use the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but if you're looking for another free editing software, a few of my friends also use HitFilm Express. If I open up DaVinci Resolve and make a new project, I can click and drag the sequence into the media panel and then into the timeline, and it'll show as a single video file. From there, I can do the same with music, sound effects, backgrounds, titles, whatever I need, and when I'm done, go to Deliver down here. To export, I'll select YouTube from the preferences, adjust any of these if I need to, and hit Add to Render Queue. When it's there, I'll hit Start Render and wait for it to finish. If you want to export directly from Critter, you'll want to go to File, Render Animation, and select Video from the top. Check your first frame, last frame, canvas size, and frames per second are all correct. The old FFmpeg website I used shut down a while back, but I still have both files for Mac and PC, which I've put on my Gumroad. Just enter zero at checkout. Even with the updated version of Critter, both of these files still work for me, but if they don't work for you, then I've also put the latest FFmpeg website link in the description. To link FFmpeg, click this folder and select the file from where you've saved it. I've just got mine on my desktop. There are a few options you can choose from the render as menu in Critter, though I've only ever used GIF or MP4. You'll want to click the three dots beside render as and make sure baseline is selected. Click OK, choose your file location and if you want to export with audio, if you've added it to your file, tick this box and select OK. The animation will now render and appear in your folder, along with a log file which you don't have to keep. I hope this tutorial was helpful, leave a comment if you've got any questions, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more animations and tutorials from me, and I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye!